Welcome to Philosophy 6 at Las Positas College. We are on chapter 7.1 here. So let's talk a little bit about what we have due this week, as well as how to work through exercise set 1 and 2. So in the first part of chapter 7.1, just going to be instructional materials. And then after that, you'll have exercise set 1, exercise set 2, exercise set 3. Exercise set 1 and 2, these are all single step proofs, which means that the entire proof is set up for you and all you have to do is just show how to use one rule to make one inference and complete the proof. So those are relatively simple. Then when you get to exercise set three, these are going to be multiple step. which means you'll have to use several consecutive steps, each building on the one that comes before it, in order to solve your proof. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate and talk through a little bit about the interface in the MindTap assignments for solving exercise set one. And that should translate pretty well to exercise set two as well. My plan at this point is to do a separate video for exercise set three. So this shows the basic interface for exercise set one of assignment 7.1. So you can see that what I have here is the basic setup of my proof. I have premise number one provided for me, premise number two provided for me. Here's premise one, and here is premise two. And then here is the conclusion that I am intending to derive. So always keep in mind that this conclusion is not part of the proof itself, it's just what I'm going to end up having on my last line. Because you know these are one-line proofs, that means that my last line is going to be not G, because they're one-line proofs, and my conclusion is going to be the same as my last premise that I'm going to add in. Taking a look up here on my toolbar, I have F and G. These are the letters that I can put into my premises. I have my constants and my parentheses here. So I can select those. And then I have all the rules of our system of natural deduction. But remember that this is just testing the first four rules, which means these are the only rules you will actually be using for this set of proofs because you've only learned modus ponens, modus tollens, hypothetical syllogism, and disjunctive syllogism. So every one of these proofs will involve one of these four rules. So what can I add to premise one and premise two in order to derive conclusion G? Well, I have not F here, and I have an if-then conditional here, which means if I apply that not F, I can get not G using modus tollens. So to indicate that, I can go into this premise box and say not G. Here is not. Here is G. Now what lines did I use to get there? Well, I used line one and line two, the only lines I have in this proof. And what was the rule I used? I used modus tollens. Now at least when I tried within my instructor access view, I was not able to repeat these questions. From within the student view, you can see if you are able to do repeats, but you don't actually need to rely on repeats to see whether or not your answer is correct. If you just click the plus here, it will tell you whether or not your rule has worked, because if it allows you to create a new line, that means that this line that you've created so far is valid. 
So you can use this to check whether or not you've solved the proof correctly. Because these are one-line proofs, if it generates another line for you, you are good to go and you've solved the problem correctly. Other than that, all you need to remember is if the conclusion you are supposed to derive is what you have as your premise and it has allowed you to generate a new line, then you have solved the problem correctly. Let's erase this line and see what happens if I don't generate my new line correctly. So let's say I do remember that not G must be my conclusion, and I only have lines 1 and 2, but I was thinking that it would be the hypothetical syllogism that got us there. Then I try to generate a new line, and I will get this warning. This step is wrong. Please re-enter. I know it can't be my conclusion that's wrong. In this case, I only have two premises, so I must have those right. So it must be the rule I was using that I chose incorrectly. And of course, we already know it's modus tollens, so all I have to do, I don't have to unselect my incorrect rule. All I have to do is replace it with the correct rule. The same is true if I had selected my premise numbers incorrectly. If I had selected one and I want to unselect it, just hit the one again and it will go away. Same with two. All right, so now it looks like we have it correct and we check. And because the new line was generated, I have not G and not G. I know I'm all set for these one line proofs. Now you want to go through this process of checking because I don't think that MindTap is going to allow you for these questions to retry the question. But once I'm all set with my new line, my conclusion, and my conclusion, I can click Submit, and MindTap indicates for me that my solution was correct. And then down here you can see I have 0.5 out of the total 10 points, or 5%, correct so far, because I've only done one out of the 20 questions. When I click to go to the next question, everything starts back over again. But you can see that if I go back to the previous question, even if I resolve it with the correct answer, MindTap will actually not let me submit. The submit button is grayed out here. So that even if I click on it, in this case, nothing happens. And the same would be true if you had gotten it incorrect. So make sure you got it correct the first time, and then go on to the next question. And then, as always, when you're done, submit the assignment as a whole. And you'll be prompted to submit the assignment once you complete all of the questions. So I hope this helps you to navigate through 7.1 and 7.2, including how to solve these questions and how to navigate through some of the tricky elements of the MindTap interface.